Hello, Antangelo. How are you doing tonight? Hello. Fine, thanks, and you? I'm doing good. Um, I'm glad you decided to join. What made you change your mind? Well, I just saw that you were online, so I decided to step in, come in. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? Oh, uh, I see you get around quite a bit in the uh, debate sphere, I guess you could say. Uh, you've called the atheist experience, I'm told, quite a few times and a few other uh, things. So I, I actually appreciate that you are actively trying to go out there and share with people what you believe to be facts. I, I think that's noble, in all honesty. Even though I may, even though I probably disagree with you 100%. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, my motivation is not to try to convert atheists, but that's, that's their decision. I just um, confess what I believe and then what others do with what I say, that's up to them. <laughs> right. Um, can I ask you something? Um, uh, is English your first language? Uh, you, you have an accent. I just don't know what accent you have. Uh, no, I am actually, um, I grew up with uh, Swiss German. I am Swiss. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, English is not my native language, so. Well, you're very well, you, you're very uh, articulate and I can understand every word that you say. Uh, so that, that's awesome. So, uh, so um, there was a question I was going to ask you, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> well, do you have any uh, questions? Oh I, oh, I know what it was. I'm going to ask you a question, then, you know, you can ask me a, a question after. Um, but I was curious. Um, do you think belief is a choice, like, to believe in X versus not believing in X or believing in Y instead of X? Well, I think that you first um, uh, should at least make up when it comes to belief in God, an epistemological framework upon which then you make your investigation. And if you have a solid epistemological framework, then you have a sound basis to make that research. And then the chance that you come to a conclusion which uh, mirrors reality is greater. But what I see is that many atheists, they don't do that. They, um, um, they don't think about how they could best investigate the origins. What I hear mostly is that atheists say, I mean, I encounter many ex-Christians, uh, so-called ex-Christians. I don't think there can be real ex-Christians, but people <clears> which <throat> say that they were Christians and then they started to read the Bible, started to have doubts, and then they mm. came into a process of deconversion and um, where their doubts overcame what they were, were believing in, and then they became un non-believers and uh, at the same time agnostics because then they claim they don't know actually what to replace the theistic f uh, faith with. That's what I commonly see, <clears throat> and I think this is not a sound method to investigate what is true in regards of the metaphysical and reality. Hey, um, can you can you give me like 45 seconds? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. Sorry, I uh, had to let the dog out, but I'm back. Okay, okay. so uh, the reason why I was asking if you believe uh, that belief is a choice it's because uh, I see this happen a lot, and I get this a lot. Oh, real quick, Corey, I see that you're trying to get in the stream, and I'll let you in, but uh, it's going to be a minute. I told Antangelo it would just be me and him for a little while, uh, and and then if I don't wrap up the stream, I'll let you in. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, Antangelo. So the reason why I ask that is because I know there are many Christians who say, uh, you just got to believe, you know, you, you choose to believe or not believe, or they, they seem to think that my belief was a choice or my lack of belief was a choice. Uh, but for me, and, I'm, and I don't think there is, I don't think there is any choice in belief because I can't, 
I don't mean any disrespect when I make this comparison, but I can't choose to believe in Santa Claus. Um, and you can't choose to believe in Santa Claus. Uh, I also can't choose to believe in God, but I also understand that you can't choose to disbelieve in God. Uh, does that make sense? And would you agree? I disagree with you. I think it makes no sense at all. I think that we all know actually that God exists, but some simply desire or have the, the, the wish to, to live independently from God. And then they construct a reason which um, backs up what they want to be true. I <laughs> see this all the time. I don't Can you turn your that... volume up just a little bit, just a hair? Well, I can try here to see. If, if not, that's maybe. fine. I just want to make sure that our volumes are somewhat at the same level. Okay. So um, if not, it, it's fine. I can hear you, but I just. Yeah, that's the only. Okay, that's fine. But like for me, uh, I was a Christian. You may say I was never a real Christian, but that's neither here nor there. As far as I was concerned and as far as I am concerned, I used to be a Christian. And I wasn't just a Sunday Christian. I didn't just go to church on Sunday, sing a, pre a few praise and worship songs, enjoy a good message, and then go home and act like church never happened. Like, I really, literally, sincerely believe in God. And not just any God, but, but the God of the Bible, the God of Jacob. Esau and, and all of them. <laughs> uh, so I began to, to have questions about my faith, about religion and Christianity uh, and God, likewise. And the more I became, um, the more I began to question my faith, the more I realized, man, I can't. I can't even choose to believe in God anymore because I feel like there's I feel like I have no good reason to. And when I and when I feel like I had no good reason to, I felt like it, there's there's no choice for me to just say, well, I can discard these reasons. I'm just going to choose to believe in God anyway. I just I can't do that. I could say I can do that, but I wouldn't truly deep down in my heart believe it. Does that make sense? Well, with me, it was actually. I would say precisely the opposite way in the sense that um, I'm a Christian for 36 years. And when I started in my, in my journey, I cannot explain it to you, but I simply had a knowledge, which I think it, it is God given. It is the Holy spirit, which confesses to you that you are born again and to, to belong to the family of Christ and the family of God. But back then, the only tool that I had actually to back up my faith was the information in the Bible. But then um, since the beginning, actually, it was always my focus to go to, um, to have dialogues with unbelievers and um, be a, do, do apologetics. And I started right from the beginning doing that. And the more information that I actually gathered, even back then when I was a very young Christian with 18, 19, and so the, the information which I received from the church and the testimonies and so forth, they strengthened my faith in a sense that even back then, if someone would say, hey, your belief is irrational and so forth, that wouldn't stick to me. And that has actually grown and the more that I, I, I went in my journey and went into um, investigating not only the, the biblical scriptures and texts and testimonies and so forth and reading Christian books, but in special then um, uh, starting to dive into signs, that actually has potentialized <clears throat> my faith uh, in, in a tremendous way. And I, I see basically um, how reality, the natural world, is such a huge and powerful testimony for the existence of God. And I am actually on the other side, on the opposite side of you. And I, ca I can only understand that someone cannot believe 
because someone must be blinded for not seeing the evidence. So I don't. I think it is a spiritual problem. Uh, well, I could understand why you would think it's a spiritual problem, uh, but I, I would disagree. But I can, I can see why you would think that. Uh, so when it comes to choice, though, to believe, like everyday choices, yes, I think there's choice there. Now it, it can be debated whether it was predetermined either by physics or by God, but that's not the point. Uh, but I feel like you cannot make the choice to believe in that Muhammad was a prophet of Allah. And you can't, I don't think you can make the conscious choice to believe that. Likewise, I can't make the conscious choice to believe that Jesus is the son of God and that there is a God. So as far as the choice goes, I, I don't feel like any of us have that choice. We only have our, our what we're predisposed to and maybe what, I don't know, every, it just everybody comes to conclusions differently. But how we come to conclusions can be, you can choose that, but the conclusion itself, I feel like you can't choose. Do you know a versicle in Romans 1, 19 to 22? Do I now? I'm sorry. Do you know the versicle in Romans, in the book of Romans by the Apostle Paul, uh, 1, 19 to 22? Do you know these versicles? Are, they fa are you familiar with them? Um, I, I, I probably, if I heard it, do you happen to have it on hand or uh, a summarization yeah. of it? Yes, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Let me ask you, if, if I quoted a verse from the Quran, it probably wouldn't have any impact on you, correct? Because, uh, well, well, I, I'm, I'm not first trying of to... All, Go ahead. No, first of first of all, that versicle doesn't say necessarily about a creator from a specific religion. What it says actually is that creation points to a creator. So, um, uh, if you try to explain our reality and our existence without a creator, we can we can go this 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 track down. And you will, will soon arrive to a point where you will say, oh, we don't know, we are f trying to figure out, possibly, maybe, I am not sure. I mean, I have seen that many, many times in dialogues with atheists. Even today, earlier today, I was at another atheist channel. And when it comes to the nitty gritty, to the real uh, um, uh, details and so forth, then materialism or naturalism simply has no explanations. So, yeah. But at the same time, though, uh, when it comes to answering the big questions, like how did the Big Bang happen? Or if you even believe in the Big Bang, um, the, the more we go back, the less questions or the more questions we'll have and the less answers we'll have. And I feel like it's the intellectually honest thing to say is, I, I don't know. Hopefully, yep. we'll find out. You just confirmed what I was saying. Yeah, I know, because okay. I, I agree yeah. with those, what you said about atheists saying. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I agree say with that. that. I say that based on experience. But if you really are honest and look honestly to the evidence, then you will come to the conclusion. I mean, I can just provide you one reason why naturalism fails just one reason and you will not be able to give me a compelling better explanation of that feat and i have brought it forwards many times to atheists and they have no answer to that 
and I, I'll, I'll soon write an article on it. And the big problem is that, what is your name? Gur. Gur, okay. Or Gurmania, but, but Gur is fine. Okay, <laughs> Gurmania. Um, the big problem is that the natural world, starting from the Big Bang to biology and biodiversity, demonstrates that there is a huge injection of instructional information. And we only know of intelligence which is able to actually provide that information. I am a machine designer by profession. And I know that in order for me to make a machine or a factory, a specific device for a specific function, I need to use my intelligence to actually sit on the table and then make a blueprint of that device which um, will provide that function which I'm aiming to, to produce. And what we see in nature is precisely this. In order for you to have the laws of physics, fine tuning of the universe, the chemical elements, um, life, the information which is required to start life, and then biodiversity, all this requires information. And we don't have an alternative mechanism well, to intelligence providing that information. You, uh, your conclusion, and correct me if I'm wrong, to the answer to these uh, big questions, like, uh, you know, how did the universe come into being if it wasn't eternal? And if it was eternal, how is it always eternal? Um, your conclusion is the God of the Bible, correct? Yes. Um, let me ask you this. Um, this is a question I ask a lot. And so if you've seen any of my stuff, you may have seen me ask this before. Um, when God creates a soul, before that soul is created, God knows where that soul is going to be when that soul leaves the world. And as far as I know, the, the God of the Bible, we'll just call him God to keep it simple, he knows that that soul, if that soul becomes an atheist like myself or just a non-Christian, that soul is going to suffer for eternity before creating that person. And that's the same God who is the answer to all of your questions. To me, that's not that, to me, that just, it, it doesn't seem logical to me. Well, first of all, even if God has the full knowledge about the entire history of the universe and the planet Earth and of each human being, um, God, he cannot be made responsible for your personal choices. Uh, your volume went low. Sorry? Uh, your volume just went low. Hold on. Say okay. something. It might be on my side. Okay. Can you okay. hear me again? Okay. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. So God cannot be made responsible for your choices. Your choices are yours. And... Um, the responsibility, what you choose, is yours. And that's why he made free will, in order that we as free agents, each one of us, could freely choose what we want to believe and what way we want to go, what choices that we want to make in our lives. And it, it, it wasn't God's intention to make robots, which are pre-programmed to do exactly what he wants these robots to do, because then you cannot have either love nor um, you ha have free choice. And he wanted free agents which could actually freely choose to love him and to follow him. And that incorporates risks. And that means that pe there will be people which actually will choose against him and prefer to live independently to him and have their life um, absent from his presence. And God will respect that choice. So <clears throat> when I die as an atheist, that's when I will realize that this God exists, correct? Yes. But at that point, I would be thinking, okay, so this God does exist. Uh, I was convinced for my young years, but in my older years, I was unconvinced of it. 
but now I see that this God is real. Is, is it too late for me to join him in paradise? Yes. And, but, and, and he knew before he created me that this was going to be the end result. I'm not saying he created me and predestined me to hell, but he created me knowing that I would take my quote unquote free will to suffer forever. Yet he made me anyway. I, I'm just being honest here. Doesn't that sound a bit uh, sadistic or does, does that seem to not sit well with you? Well, I think that God, he opens the door so that all people can be saved, but he permits people to um, decide against him. And you kind of blame him that he created the world in the same sense that when you are your father. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. Okay. So I am a father of a girl. She is seven years old. But the, que the same question goes to a mother and a father. Would you decide not to put someone to the world because there are risks? Um, <clears throat> that's one reason why, one of the reasons why. I don't want to be a father is because of that. I'm not an anti-natalist, but those thoughts do kind of well let let me let me let me rephrase it and kind of turn it back around a little bit if you don't mind. Would you would you uh conceive and and let your wife give birth to your daughter if you knew that at age 12 or no age 5 before the age of accountability? that she was going to be burned alive? Um, probably not. Well, because that, it, that's just kind of how I view God and his foreknowledge. I feel like, I feel like a loving parent, <clears throat> I feel like a loving parent would let their kids make mistakes because that's how you learn. But I don't think, I can't see why a loving parent would let their children make a mistake so bad that it would mess up not just their life, but their eternity and also the offsprings uh, of your children. Th okay, that's just, so, okay yeah. so let us suppose that in order for you to have a child which will then um, be able to know you, and um, have uh, happiness for all eternity and enjoy existence and living, you would have to go as well and accept the risk that maybe another child of yours would not choose that. Would you um, permit that child not to come into existence just because of that, because of this other child, which then eventually would not come to that same uh, uh, enjoy that same happiness. Mm. All right. So, uh, uh, sorry. I, are you saying would I have a child knowing that one would suffer, but the other one wouldn't? I, I'm. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Can you just? Uh, yes, you understood what I was saying. Um. <clears throat> let's see. I don't know. Um. If because here's my thing, and this could be a fault or it could be a, a virtue. I don't know. The thought of uh, having a child that I love dearly that could suffer, not staying for eternity, but could just suffer immensely without any uh, reward for it, like suffering for suffering's sake, I feel like that would outweigh the joy of the son or daughter that I would have that would experience life in all of its goodness. For me, the bad, I wouldn't be able to think of the good life that my other son is having because I'd be so focused on, I'd be so torn apart by knowing how much pain my other son is going through, if that makes sense. You know, the thing is that God, he made everything in order that nobody actually has to go to hell. That's why Christ came and, paid and went to the cross. So... He made everything in order that nobody has to suffer hell. But if people choose freely to go there, that's why he gave us free will. So 
he so, opened <clears throat> he opened the way in order for people to go to heaven but for some reasons that only people know they prefer to live independently from god and autonomously to him and god simply will um respect that <clears throat> well let, so let me let me uh share something that i said in a previous video let's say there was a man sleeping in a house that's on fire and a fireman walks by he's well equipped he's got all the gear and he goes and he starts knocking on the door to try to get the attention of the sleeping man and then he's not getting an answer so he starts banging on the door he starts shouting at the window he finally uses a megaphone Finally, the man sleeping in the burning house wakes up and says, answers the door and says, well, what do you want? And the, fire, the firefighter says, listen, your house is on fire. I'm here to save you. Would you come with me? And the man who's barely awake says, uh, no, no thanks. Get lost. And then he goes back to bed and the house burns down with him inside of it. I would consider that firefighter to be bad at his job. That's kind of how I see God when I hear these stories of, you know, you don't, you know, God's not going to uh, force you to go to hell, but he'll let you go to hell. Like, would, would you let your children do something so bad that it would just screw up their entire lives if you could stop it? Well, I think you are missing one very relevant factor here, that God will judge each of us for our decisions and our lives. And um, justice requires punishment. And the Bible says that we are all um, and, not, and that punishment. not living upon, upon the standard which God re regards us as holy, righteous, and just. We are all sinners and uh, um, lack the, 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 the holiness which he actually uh, requires to have communion with us and if if christ wouldn't have come then we would all have been on the on the way to hell but he came to save us and to be a justice for us and he paid for our sins <clears throat> so this is a very mm -hmm. relevant factor uh, that is uh, in regards of, of of justice we we all walk in unrighteousness and do things which we know are not so right but we, nonetheless we, we we decide to do bad things so we all deserve eternal suffering the bible says that nobody um lives upon the, the perfection and the standard which he requires in order that we can be saved just by our doings but so the bottom line is that everyone deserves to eternally suffer unless they have Christ. Yes, if you've been if you've been a Christian, then you know probably Romans three, which lines that out very clearly. If you want, I can read it for you. Uh, no, that's that's okay. Uh, no offense, <clears throat> but so it seems to me free will is is what got us into this mess in the first place if the Christian God is real and the Bible true. It was man's free will that caused, that allowed death, murderers, genocide, and all these other terrible things, even natural disasters, depending on the domination, the domination of the, the religion. Um, but wouldn't life be better if God just didn't give us that free will or just give us limited free will? Again, let your child make a mistake but don't, don't douse them in gasoline for making a mistake. Well, you can't have um, free will limited. Either free will is, is unrestricted and free, or it isn't. And then you are just having a robot, which is pre-programmed to do what, you, what the free range <laughs> is that you are pre-programming that being. Well, uh, I would rather be uh... inside of that range, but that's not that in, in such a world you cannot have love. No, I would rather have no love and be pre uh pre programmed and live a life that's that's void of pain and especially void of eternal suffering. 
that's what I would choose over. If that if that was the option, either be a pre-programmed robot that enjoys God's presence, or not be a pro, pre-programmed robot and risk going to suffer forever. Maybe that's just a personal thing, but that's just how I see it. So is that the reason why you are not a Christian? Because you think that God is unjust by having created free creatures, which uh, can um, decide to live to live. Uh, um, autonomously to him and then they will be destined to go to hell is that the reason why you are today an, an atheist and no uh i'm an atheist because i i just realized that god seems the invoking god or the supernatural seems to complicate things versus solves things i feel like it creates a bigger mystery than solving a current mystery and then when it comes to yahweh uh the the christian god the abrahamic god the bible is a very good case in my opinion against that god because it just doesn't make any rational sense to me um like i for me personally i found no sufficient evidence for a deist god and the Bible seems to be more evidence against a Christian or an Abrahamic God because I feel like if the Abrahamic God was real, then there wouldn't be all these, like, he wouldn't allow massive suffering on an eternal scale, especially if he's all-loving and all-powerful and, and, excuse me, all-perfect as well. That, that doesn't make sense to me, so it's hard for me to believe in that, that sort of thing, to believe in that God. Well, I think that um, I think that we are all limited in the sense that we we cannot fully understand maybe God's decisions, why He created the world as He did. There is an important philosophical question: Is the world that God created the best possible world? And um, I don't think that any one of us, neither you, neither me, um, can come to such a conclusion or a decision or evaluate that situation because we are limited in our understanding with our senses. We are limited. So um, this is contrasted to a God which is described in the Bible as all-knowing, as all-powerful, as eternal, um, which has characteristics which are far beyond uh, our limited understanding. So um, what I can do is I can either take on faith that, that God actually knows what he is doing and that what he does is always right, or I can simply reject that sense and that belief, and then um, then, the, then anyone goes his its own way. And, I mean, you, you confessed already that you have no alternative explanation. So... I would say that you could uh, justifiably say um, the God of the Bible doesn't make sense to me, but here is a better explanation, a better alternative. But that you, you seems it seems you don't have that. Well, let let me put it as a uh, let me give you an, an analogy. Let's say we're walking on the beach and we come across a watch, and you say. Or somebody tells me, hey, Germania, this watch was made by an invisible, all-powerful, mysterious, magical unicorn. I would say, no, I, I highly doubt that's the reason. But then you could say, well, how did it get here? And I say, well, I don't know. Maybe watch the door. I can give you all these other possible explanations. But that doesn't mean the, the explanation that I don't believe in is justified. Like I, just because somebody makes a claim that it was a magical unicorn, I may not know what the answer is, but I know what the answer most likely is not. Does that make sense? So rather than saying a magical unicorn, let's let's uh, restrict that to two possible explanations. One is that an intelligent being of unqualified identity made the watch. And the other alternative explanation would be that random chance and um, wind and natural elements um, using long periods of time somehow 
made that watch. Which of the two explanations do you think would be more rational? Okay, so either the watch came about through whatever, like just random chance and time and wind or whatever else, or it's, it's what was the other answer? I'm sorry. An in intelligence, uh, an intelligent being. I would say it would be an intelligent being. But as soon as you say this intelligent being is all powerful, all knowing, all loving, all perfect, and also will send you and anyone else who doesn't love him back to stuff for eternity, that's when the answer becomes uh, very screwy for me. But obviously this is, no offense, this is a false dichotomy. It's either this or it's that, when in reality that's not really what it is. Like we have, you know, scientists have their answers, their theories and their hypotheses, but then Christians have theirs. So it's just, like I can say a unicorn didn't put it there, but I can also say at the same time, I don't know who put it there. Um, yeah. So I am positing two options here. One is intelligence and the second is no intelligence. What other, what other third option do you suggest? Oh, giving this exact hypothetical, I would say it would be intelligence. No, 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 I am asking you, you said that I proposed a false dichotomy and you came up with signs and, and so forth. Yeah, I, I, I dealt with extra answers. I, I am asking you, if you say that I proposed a false dichotomy, which is on the one side an intelligent agency and on the other side, side a non-intelligent um, mechanism, a natural mechanism, and you say this is a false dichotomy. In order that to be a false dichotomy, you need to be able to provide a third possible option as a mechanism instantiating that watch. What is it? Well, in the scenario you gave me, it was literally only two options. But that, that that's why I said it was a false dichotomy, because you only gave me two options. When in reality, like when it comes to what, you know, how the universe came to be, I don't know. There's a lot of options on the table, some on the science side, some on the religious side. But in the scenario you gave me, it was just two options. Either it came to be, either the watch was put there and designed unintelligently, or it was put there intentionally and by intelligent designer. That, that's all I was saying. But that, that, that's fine. We don't have to go down the rabbit trail of being pedantic, but I felt like it was necessary for this certain hypothetical, at least. I think um, this is a very important point, Germania, and I want that you understand this. I am saying that there are basically uh, two options, which is a true dichotomy. Either there was at the bottom of reality an eternal conscious intelligent mind, a creator which instantiated everything and upon which everything is uh, dependent, or there was some natural non-intelligent mechanism. You are stating that there are other options. So again, my question oh, okay. is... I, I see, I see. So my question is, what are these other options which you are proposing? Well, I, again, I may not know the answer. I may not know that the answer is Y, but I know that it's definitely not Z. Z being, in that one scenario, the unicorn, or in this case, uh, some eternal being because for all we know like for like when it comes to the universe and all of its mysteries we could say it's eternal or we could say it wasn't eternal but it was made by something that was eternal so i feel like no matter how you flip it we're dealing with an unanswerable question if the universe are, was eternal or you, the being that created let, it is eternal let, let, let me interrupt you here mm -hmm. once again you are sidestepping and not answering actually my question I am saying either there was a God or there was no God involved in creating the physical world. Yeah, you I would say the latter. You are, you are, you are, no, that's not the question. But uh. you, you, you objected me and said, oh, you are using a false dichotomy. So you have not yet answered. And you said, oh, well, there are unknown other possibilities. Well, um, what can be claimed without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. If you are not well able said. to give me... <laughs> If you are not giving me a third option, 
then why should I believe or why should you believe that there are other possible mechanisms? Yeah, and, and you would agree, going back to a previous point, that whatever belief you and I come to, it's not by choice, it's by conviction. Sorry, that's a bit off topic, but just wanted to bring that back yes, up. But, yeah, I would like true. that I would like to pin that down mm -hmm. where you either either agree with me and consent with me that there are just two options. One no, is I, a creator and yeah, so uh, yeah, I, either I, I, there is a creator or there is no creator, and right. you are saying this is a false dichotomy. Okay, so yeah, I, yeah. I, no, I've again, already answered what this. Is, no, you didn't. You are sidestepping. I'm asking you. Hold, hold on. Let me, let me talk. Let me, let me talk. Okay. Did the universe, have, either the universe is eternal or it was created by something that is eternal? Is that a, is that a, a summarization of your question? My point is simply this. Just yes or no. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be... Uh, no, I will just I will just clarify again what I am saying. I am saying either there was a creator, an eternal creator, which instantiated the universe, or and there's not everything else which is contingent to this first cause, or mm -hmm. there is not. You I would said, say that you said okay, that okay. I was using a false dichotomy. You're really hung up asked, on this. <clears throat> what, yes, because you are objecting okay. something yeah, I've which I think is. No, you, you oh, sidestepped and you didn't clarify if there isn't a third option, what it is. You said, well, there may be a third option, but I can't specify what it is. Well, then I say again, if you, if you make I'm a claim to without evidence, then I will dismiss it without evidence and yeah. I will stay mm -hmm. with my dichotomy and my di dichotomy stands. Okay, that, that's fine. We'll, we'll grant that. That's fine. So, either the universe is eternal, or it was created by an eternal being. I, I get that. That's that's the dichotomy. Uh, that that's. I'm not saying it's a false dichotomy anymore. I'm just saying, okay, yeah, those are the two options, right? Good. Okay. So yeah. Think, okay. So, we're, so oh, wait, wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I just let you talk. Give me just a second. Okay. So my answer, my personal answer to that is. I would say that I don't know what the answer is, whether the universe, uh, for what we call the universe, either has always existed or it was started by something eternal. All I know is okay. that if it was started by something eternal, I don't know what that is, and I doubt that such a thing exists, but maybe it does, but I'm, I find it suspect, especially if this eternal being that created the universe is also the God of the Bible who drowned the whole world and all that stuff. Well, what I use is eliminative induction. That means if one explanation is not possible, then the other explanation, even if it is not fully understood, must be true. So you agreed with me that there are two possible options. One is that the universe is eternal. There is another one that the universe is self-caused, that it started from nothing, or the other that an eternal, conscient, intelligent creator instantiated the universe. Right, yeah, that, that's fine. That's so, fine, okay. Yeah, so yeah. now let's give a closer look to the, op to the alternative option to a creator, okay? okay. So, is the universe can the can the universe exist outside of time? Uh, not that I'm aware of. At least not the universe we live in. Okay. So, how could the universe be eternal if it is in time? Uh, again, <laughs> uh, this I could say I could say all kind of things, but the question still would apply to your God. If your God exists outside of time, then how can, then when does he exist? Well, the thing like, is that, this, this well, the thing is, yeah, I can explain to you. Um, God, can, time. God, God can exist outside and beyond the physical universe and outside of time. Is, is and, it possible that there is another universe that lives outside of space and time? Something that we can't conceive of. Is that if possible? We, if we, if we um, posit that the universe is physical, then it must be in time. Otherwise, it couldn't be physical. 
Now, could it be another non-physical, like an immaterial uh, plane that doesn't have time or space, but it exists in the same way you might imagine God, but it's not the God that you believe in. It's not even a God at all. It's just some sort well, of mystical force. Is you, that a possibility? Well, a force is already something physical. Energy is okay, physical. Okay, I say force because our vocabulary is uh, deficient when it comes to describing these things. I think you would agree the same way about your God. There's probably a lot of words that don't really do your God justice. Well, the, the only real which we can say which is not physical are abstract numbers. But abstract numbers do not have a causal um, power. They are, but, they but again, are. if if we can, if we agree, <laughs> which I, this is hypothetical, if we can think that okay, there is some, there is a guy that exists outside outside of space and time and is immaterial, and it's the God of the Bible, isn't it possible that there could also be another explanation, which is also timeless spaces? I'm not saying I I agree with this. I'm just saying. It, what makes you think that this thing or being happens to be your God? Couldn't it be something else that we just don't know about? Again, I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just, I feel like there's a lot of other possibilities, especially when you can say, well, it's spaceless and timeless. If you can say that about God, couldn't you say that about anything, especially stuff we don't, you know, we can't even conceive of? There's okay, if you remove the physical and if you remove the mind, then... All which you have still left ontologically are um, abstract numbers. And abstract numbers, they exist in the mind of intelligence. They don't exist somewhere in a, in a hyperspace or so. And they do not have causal powers. They cannot instantiate uh, the physical. And, and again, uh, your answer to the universe, <clears throat> and correct me if I'm wrong, your answer to how the universe came to be was it was created by the, the same God who drowned the entire world and but killed. I would suggest, I would suggest, women. Okay, I would suggest following mm -hmm. that you first put the God of the Bible on site. No, because moment. that's the end goal when it comes to these discussions. It is the end goal. Uh, I agree uh, with you. Okay. But when I use a cumulative argument, <clears throat> To the existence of God, then usually the first question which I ask is, um, is there a God? And by a God, I mean an intelligent, uh, eternal creator which instantiated the physical universe. Right, and, and I don't think not. that's the case. No. Okay, so that's what we maybe have to pin down first before we can actually but go a step further I, and I'll ask tell you what. If, if an intelligence eternal creator is the better explanation to our existence than who is it then you can go and and p try to pin down amongst many different religions which one that best okay yeah fits yeah the bill I'll, I'll tell you what let's let's grant it let's say uh the universe was created <clears throat> by a by an eternal deity and okay now let's say this eternal deity who is spaceless timeless and material is also um, Yahweh, Jehovah, the God of the Bible. Okay. And now let's, okay, so where do we go from there? Let's say it's that God. That's the end goal. Start and worship him, follow him. Okay, wait, wait, why would I worship this God? Why because would I worship good. this God? Because, Have you, the, because go he is good, just, loving, uh, graceful. Do you think that's what I experience? You don't find any passages in the Bible uh, that questions how the, the goodness of this God? Well, first of all, um, do you think that with your limited understanding, you have a better um, way to judge how to lead and deal with the, with the created world? Way better than the God of the Bible, yes. yes. <laughs> let so me ask I, you, let, let me ask you this. Okay. So I, so I, I fully disagree with you on, on this, and this yeah. is a mistake which many atheists do. They think that they are able to 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 judge. Do how you they not oppose drowning the, the entire world? 
you, you well, think that was you, well, you don't do you judge that, God for that if he's yeah, real? Do you think that God is in his right as the creator to judge the humankind for, for its sins? So he created us, behavior? therefore he can kill us and torture us if he wants to. But he's he all good. Can, he can give and he can take human lives. Okay, he is not like us. And he is the one which can, which is the, the only one which is 100% good which can just which can judge people what and makes if, you say this god is good though especially all good what because, what makes you think that because he has self revealed <laughs> himself as such and he has demonstrated it through christ okay so what has he done that's good to you like what what what's done in the bible that uh that you would consider good he like, has paid for my sins and he has given me eternal life and he has given me the privilege to become a child of his and he has given me um, the hope to be with him eternally and to enjoy being with him and to be part of his fa family. Okay, and then all your loved ones who aren't Christians, I think you would agree that if the Christian God is real, that they will go to hell, correct? Or the lake of fire. I don't know. I don't. I know mean, what you, you, yeah, I mean, obviously, if they're not Christians, the, they're going to suffer forever. Well, if if, the, if that, that if that's true, if the Christian God is real, how are you going to be happy in heaven, knowing that your loved ones are suffering for eternity? I think there are questions which we are not owed to ask. It is upon God to a judge in right. No, no. You tell me. I must know. I must have an answer. But now you're not having an answer. I don't have an answer to all well, questions. <laughs> welcome to the club. Sometimes there's not an answer to some questions. And now that, but you were getting all over my case for that. But now you don't have an answer. I don't have to have answers to everything. Otherwise exactly. My bad. point. Yep, yeah, exactly. I don't have, a, have to have an answer for every naturalistic thing, for everything that's uh, that started, if we can even say started prior to the Big Bang. Uh, but that was a problem uh, that you had with me earlier. But now that I'm asking you a question that you don't have an answer for, you're like, oh, well, you know, we, we don't know everything. Well, the difference, the difference, Germania, is that you have no answer to basically anything. And a true atheist becomes a nihilist because he cannot know actually anything. But I know that my God exists. And he has self-revealed himself through nature and the Bible. And then based of that, on that self-revelation, I can know God. I cannot know everything in regards of him, but I can know a, a great deal based on that what he and, has revealed. And you can himself. rest assured that any of your loved ones who will, are not Christians when they die will suffer for eternity. I leave the judgment to God. But I know that he let's just say a hundred years from now. Christ. Let's just say a hundred years from now. You know, you're dead, you're long gone. And <clears throat> the judgment comes, you know, a thousand years go by. None of your loved ones, and let's I'll go a step further. None of your enemies are in heaven. Therefore, all your enemies and some, maybe most, of your loved ones are suffering for eternity. Are you gonna like this? <laughs> how are you going to have a good time in heaven? You see, you that? see, Germania, you you try to understand things from your perspective, but your perspective is not God's perspective, and you don't know how I will feel when I am in heaven in regards of these issues. I don't know it either, to be to be honest with you, but that's the thing. I trust that God knows what he is doing because he, he is far above me and you, and he is far above every understanding. And I simply trust that he is just and righteous and that he will judge each of us in righteousness. And that's enough for me. Okay, so you would agree that it's okay not to always have an answer. 
I never claim that I have an answer to all questions, but what uh, me, me neither. Answer, me neither. Well, the difference between us, Germania, is that when it <laughs> comes to all to questions about ultimate reality, then I have an answer which is based on God's self-revelation through scriptures and God's revelation yeah, nature. through nature. Yeah. While <clears throat> you do not so, have an answer based on naturalism, you have no replacement for God. So what you can do is say, I don't know, but maybe in the future, someone, science or whatever, will find out. And that is a classical naturalism of the gaps. That's, your <laughs> That's not a thing. But That's okay, so, <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think the contrast here is I don't know how the universe came into being. And you know, or you say you know, or you at least believe, that it's a that it's a God. And it's also the same God who is going to cast all of his enemies into the lake of fire, where, where the smoke of the torment will ascend forever and ever. So I, I feel comfortable saying I don't know because I just don't know. I would love to know. And a matter of fact, if your God is real, or if a God is real, I really do want to know. Because I actually, I don't shun knowledge. i not saying that you do by any means, but anytime there's something that I don't know, like how the universe came to be, I want to know that stuff. And uh, matter of fact, if, if, if Thor, the god of lightning and thunder, existed, I'd also want to know that as well. Um, but yeah, I, 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 let me ask you this, if you don't mind, and then... And then we can wrap it up. And I just want to say I've enjoyed having you here. I hope you have felt welcome. And uh, maybe we could do it again sometime. But before you go, this is probably a big can of worms that I shouldn't open up. <laughs> but if you have a few more minutes, I would like to ask you uh, just one more question. Go ahead. All right. So, um, and uh, Alpha 4 will love this question. He's the... In the back, oh, back in backstage. <laughs> okay, so when a baby dies, as far as the Bible's concerned or your own opinion, whatever the case might be, when a baby dies, does the baby go straight to heaven, hell, or another place? Goes to heaven. And if a baby is born and lives past the age of accountability, there's a risk of that baby going to hell, correct? Sorry? So if the baby is born and lives past the age of accountability, uh, it's then that, so, that baby's soul is then at risk of eternal hell, right? It is past what? I didn't understand uh, what you... When the, when the baby becomes an adult, mm -hmm. it, that baby's soul uh, becomes uh, at risk of eternal damnation, correct? Well, uh, if it's not a Christian, has, well, no, if it is, it is not a Christian and it had the opportunity to know the gospel and rejects the gospel, then that person will uh, be accountable uh, without having Christ. Uh, who, who okay, provides so, forgiveness. so <clears throat> if, if a baby dies, it's guaranteed <clears throat> to go to heaven and, uh, and not have to go to the lake of fire to suffer forever, correct? Yes. But if the baby lives to adulthood, it then does have a risk of going to hell because maybe the soul won't find out about Jesus or maybe the soul will find out about Jesus but reject him for whatever reason. So if you die as a baby, you're guaranteed to go to heaven. If you die as an adult, it's a gamble. Would you agree with that? Uh, yes. So wouldn't it logically follow that <clears throat> a baby dying would be the greatest thing that could happen to it? You know, uh, William Lane Crabe, he falled in that trap in regards of that question, because when he was asked about the Canaanites and the genocide and the babies which were killed there, then mm -hmm. someone said, well, what happens with these babies? And then he said, well... <laughs> They have a good destiny because they went to heaven. 
and he was hev heavily criticized for that okay and mm -hmm. i think it wasn't a good answer to give in regards of that question okay so what, what is so, your answer so i uh, to be honest i i've not thought about that uh, um in the question so i cannot give you uh, an answer to that moment at th this moment but maybe okay, even that's if fair. i would but maybe even if i would think about your question more more and search for an answer maybe there wouldn't be one right now so it would okay. be an open question yeah that's fair <clears throat> oh I'll, I'll tell you what uh we'll go ahead and wrap this up but um I, I would just ask you to 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 think about that question and if you don't have an answer at the end of the day that's fine you know me i'm okay with saying i don't know <laughs> but uh i do have a video it's called a question for pro-life christians i think it's only three minutes long uh it kind of gives a little bit more detail so when you get a chance i would ask you to watch it and then maybe next week or a few weeks from now we can uh do another live stream and talk about that and then exchange some more ideas. Uh, well, I can put it in my Facebook uh, timeline and ask my Facebook friends and then see what the answers come up to that question. Okay, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, or, or if you like, you can, you, do you have an account on Facebook? <clears throat> I, I do, but I never use it. Um, I'll tell you what though, uh, I do have an email that's, uh, it's on my channel, uh, the about section. Just email me then, and uh, then that way I'll have your email, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, I will we'll go do ahead. Following. I will do following. Um, for oh, okay. okay I I'll put it here in the side chat. You can ask. You can send me the question how you would formulate it. Okay. And the way you do it, I will put it in my timeline on Facebook. Okay. And then see what the answers will be to that question. Okay. Well. <clears throat> I'm about to let everybody in. There's only two people waiting, but uh, if you want to stick around, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but in either either case, I appreciate you coming on, and I'm glad we could have this uh, this exchange. Okay, you can let them in, and uh, if they want to ask me something, I'll be stick around a little bit more. No problem.